console my people, the ones dear to me. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem. The time of your mourning is ended now. The Lord of life will come. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare a way for the Lord. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Make straight a highway for God. Every valley is made a plain, Every mountain is leveled. The glory of God shall then be revealed, And the nations will sing in praise. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare a way for the Lord. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Make straight a highway for God. Let us continue our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. As we come together on this beautiful Sunday morning, we give thanks to God today for the blessings of this past week. So let us prepare ourselves as we enter into this rejoicing Sunday, this Gaudate Sunday, to celebrate the coming feasts of Christmas. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy, have mercy on us. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our responsorial psalm is number 97. We will sing refrain number 2 of 97. Cry out with joy and gladness, for the Lord is in your midst. The Holy One of Israel, cry out, cry out with joy. Cry out with joy and gladness, for the Lord is in your midst. The Holy One of Israel, cry out, cry out with joy. God indeed is my Savior, I will never be afraid. My strength and courage is the Lord, my Savior and my song. Cry out with joy and gladness, for the Lord is in your midst. The Holy One of Israel, cry out, cry out with joy. Give thanks and praise the name of God, sing out to all the earth. The wondrous deeds that God has done, our Savior and our song. Cry out with joy and gladness, for the Lord is in your midst. The Holy One of Israel, cry out, cry out with joy. Shout with joy, O Zion, for dwelling in your midst is the Holy One of Israel, your Savior and your song. Cry out with joy and gladness, for the Lord is in your midst. The Holy One of Israel, cry out, cry out with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again. Rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, 
Whoever has two cloaks should share them with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Extorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of you probably remember from your own childhood this time of year in particular was a very active time of year on CBS, NBC, and ABC because throughout the Christmas season those three channels which were the only three options we had can you believe that kids? Three channels? would routinely show the Christmas stories that we have come to know and love as our children's programming. And I was thinking about this the other day as I was uh, selecting The Grinch Who Stole Christmas on demand to watch the, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas on TV, and I was thinking how easy it has become for us to just be able to say, I want to watch a movie, and I'm going to watch a movie, and you just click on it, and it's there. But our childhood was different. We had to wait, and we, had to, we were stuck watching whatever one uh, came up on television. And I was thinking about a number of the different stories that we would watch as children and how formative they, began, uh, they became for us, uh, me, maybe even unknowingly formative. Because all, all of the major Christmas stories, when we think about them, have a particular villain in them who is trying to steal the spirit of Christmas, who is trying to steal the joy of Christmas. When you think about the Grinch who stole Christmas, he's trying to steal the joy that the little Who's in Whoville were celebrating. When you think about the, uh, the Ebenezer Scrooge, he was trying to place something uh, of a monetary value over the joys of the Christmas season and found himself to be very bitter and angry. When you think of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the abominable snowman, right? Trying to ruin Christmas as well. We see that there are many things within these stories that communicate the importance of maintaining a sense of joy during this Christmas season. And we also know that through these stories, there are probably a lot of things in our life that can ring true for us, and we can take these stories and apply them to our own life. For we know that there are things in our world today that will oftentimes try to rob us of the joys and the beauty of this season. There are things in the world today that maybe even in our own lives that will draw us away from the true meaning of Christmas and distract us from the most important part of this holiday season. When we think about those things, those Grinches in our life, whether they be sin or anxiousness or anxiety or fears, 
whatever those things may be, maybe troubled relationships. We know that there are things in our life today that will try to rob us of a positive spirit. And so this this season of preparation of Advent, this, this time of preparation becomes very pivotal to the Christian life. It is an essential part of our Christian journey as we begin this new Christian year. We've journeyed these past three weeks and we've come to this Sunday, this day that is immediately preceding the festivities of Christmas. And the church in her wisdom gives us this Gaudate Sunday, this rejoicing Sunday where we're reminded that we should be doing things a little bit differently today. That today, this Gaudate Sunday, marks a Sunday of immediate preparation. That we are to prepare ourselves for the coming feasts of Christmas. And that as we continue to light the candles on this Advent wreath, we are reminded that regardless of the amount of darkness in our world today, regardless of the amount of trouble that may reside in our hearts, our faith teaches us that we can have confidence in knowing that our God is a good and generous God, that our God loves us deeply, and that he desires to dispel all darkness from our life. And we use this Advent wreath as a reminder that Christ is the one who continues to bring light into the world. He is the one that illuminates the path upon which we are to walk. He is the one that illuminates our hearts and gives us the opportunity to dispel all darkness and to allow light to shine forth in our words and in our actions. It is the goodness of God that we celebrate here today on this rejoicing Sunday, the goodness that compelled the the followers of Jesus Christ to continue to spread the good news It is the generosity of God that is poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that John the Baptist spoke of in our Gospel reading today. For John knew his role. He was that forerunner. He was that individual who was called to speak in good times and in bad As he wandered through the desert, he was the one who was calling people to repentance for their sins, to dispel that darkness in preparation for the coming of Christ. He was the one who reminded individuals that they are able to live a holy and zealous life, even in the state that God had called them to. He's speaking in our gospel reading today to tax collectors, to soldiers, to all who approach him. And he reminds them that even in the midst of their ordinary, everyday life, they have an opportunity to live a radically deep faith in God. And that same message resonates with all of us today. That some days we feel like we are just going through the motions. That we feel like we are just living an ordinary, everyday life. And we find ourselves struggling to get out of that ordinary life. We find ourselves to be freed, wanting to be freed from the challenges and the trials that we face. And John the Baptist stands as a great testament for all of us. Reminding each one of us that regardless of how ordinary, regardless of how routine life may become, the expectation of our Creator is one of great anticipation and joy. That regardless of whatever we may be bringing with us today, when we leave here today, our hearts are illuminated by the Eucharist. That the presence of God is made known in our life through his word and through this sacrament. And we, pr- we, we use again this wreath as that symbol to remind us that when we come in here, regardless of how dark our hearts may be, when we leave here today, we leave here as people who are renewed. As people who are renewed by the sacrament that nourishes us the sacrament that comes down from heaven, the sacrament that has been passed on to us from one generation to the next, we participate in something today 
that is far greater than just you and I. It is you, it is me, it is our creator, it is our savior, it is our family, it is our friends, it is the people that you are sitting next to here in church that help to make this day holy and that help to bring light into the world. Let us pray that all of us who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit will be set aflame today on this Gaudate Sunday. Let us rejoice and be glad for the, our Savior is near. Let us wait in joyful hope for the coming festivities. And let us pray for one another that all of us may have the strength, the fortitude, the knowledge, and the burning desire in our heart to live holiness in whatever aspect of life God has called us to. So joining with the universal church around the world, we stand today and profess our faith together in confidence and freedom. And we say, I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. Seeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. It was spoken through the prophet. Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. The swamp baptism in the subsidy. I look forward to the resurrection of the body. Oh God, we know that you have commanded all of us to prepare the way for Christ our Lord. Give us, we pray, the confidence now and the humility to approach you with humble hearts. We ask that you grant the prayers that we now offer. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, God of mercy. church in North America under the patronage of Our Lady of Guadalupe that we might have the humility of Juan Diego to be open to hearing the Word of God in unexpected ways. For our elected officials that they might be guided by the Holy Spirit to make decisions that protect the common good for all, especially those who are most vulnerable. For our parish, that we may be strengthened in our devotion to Eucharistic adoration. For each of us, that we may be more perfect model of charity and generosity towards those who are in need, and by our actions inspire others to do the same. For all who have died, especially for Gail Welter, David DeMarco, Wilbert Klupert, Donald Huck, Shirley Garath, and Ivana Keister, who died this past week, and especially for those remembered at this Mass, William and Beverly Preston. 
for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of power and mercy, open our hearts and welcome. Remove the things that hinder us from receiving Christ with joy so that we may share his wisdom and become one with him when he comes again in glory. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Number 401, O come divine Messiah, 401. O come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, Dispel the night and show your face And bid us hail the dawn of grace O come, divine Messiah The world in silence waits the day When hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. O come, desired of nations, whom priest and prophet long foretold, come break the captive fetters, redeem the long lost fold. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night, and show your face, and bid us hail the dawn of grace. O oh, come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is number 937, now in this banquet. We'll sing the Advent refrain of 937. Justice and light. Grant us compassion, strength for the day, wisdom to walk in your way.
Before we conclude with our closing prayer, I'd just like to uh, take a moment and highlight our um, beautiful shrine here to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, if today hadn't been the third Sunday of Advent, today would have been normally celebrated as the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And as many of you know the story of St. Juan Diego and uh, Mexico City and the shrine there, uh, we know that there are many wonderful and beautiful miracles attributed to Our Lady. And uh, she's actually known as the patroness of the Americas. And so uh, she is our patroness uh, as well here in the United States of America, as well as all of the entire continent. And so uh, we're very blessed to have a very strong uh, devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe here at Holy Family. Today at the Spanish Mass at 1210, there will be a very special celebration um, in honor of her. In fact, the Hispanic community and other members of our Holy Family community gathered um, early this morning at, uh, I believe it's either 5 or 6 a.m., uh, and they, they did a, a beautiful song and, and dedication to the Blessed Mother at that time when they uh, all came in to, to see the beautiful shrine this morning, and we'll continue that celebration today um, at the 1210 Mass. So if you're, if you're interested in that, um, and you know the Packer game isn't until later tonight, uh, if you're interested, I invite you to come and, and join us at 1210 uh, for that beautiful celebration. And uh, if it's something that's new to you or a little out of your comfort zone, that's good, right? That's good. That's what Advent is about. So just want to encourage you to, uh, to participate if you're interested. If you're not able to make it, uh, please do us a favor and offer a prayer for Holy Family, uh, for our community, and, uh, and let us offer our hearts and ourselves uh, to the love and the, the patronage of, of the Blessed Virgin Mary under Our Lady of Guadalupe's title. And so please stand with me as we conclude our Mass in prayer. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'm also going to invite you to join me in praying a Hail Mary together in honor of uh, the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 409. People Look East. 409. People look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way. Furrows be glad the earth is bare. One more seed is planted there. Give up your strength, the seed to nourish, that in course the flower may flourish. People look east and sing today. Love the rose is on the way.